Hi, it's Mike Pangia, and we're going to talk today about French press coffee. Many of you realize that I already did a video on French press coffee a couple of months ago. So why am I doing it again? Well, a couple of reasons. Number one, that was my first one, and my production values now are better, so I can produce a better product. More importantly, I've improved how I make my French press coffee. I've been making this coffee this way for seven years, but still looking for little improvements, little ways that it can be done better. And I found a couple of improvements, I've integrated them into my procedure in a way that I think is significant and worthwhile to review with my loyal subscribers. I'll be discussing the equipment, the ratios, and the procedure necessary to make a fine cup of French press coffee. In addition, I'll show a new method for my post filtration step, which I think will improve things tremendously. But as a result, I've also changed the ratio a little bit. So look for a couple of new things in this video. Before I get into the actual making of the coffee, there are a few general items I'd like to discuss. First of all, the beans themselves. I'm sure you will see promotions and advertising for premium beans, beans that are more expensive, that are more delicious, that are more sabroso, that are supposed to be really, really good. Well, here's my experience. Perhaps I'm a little too unsophisticated for these guys, but I have tried the expensive ones, the premium ones, and frankly, I don't see any difference worth paying for. Uh, I lean towards Colombian medium roast. If they meet those two factors, chances are I'm gonna like it. You grind them fresh, you measure them, you do the right procedure and you follow the directions and you're gonna make a good cup of coffee. What about the water? Well, tap water is probably gonna be good enough unless you have a big iron or mineral problem with your water, or God forbid, lead in the water or something awful like that, your tap water is probably good enough. I use the water that's filtered through my refrigerator and dispensed through the door, and it works out fine. The other general thing that's important is the ratio of coffee beans to water. Now, I do it by weight, and I think that's the best way to do it. It provides you the best consistency and you're able to adjust it as you need to. If you want to make it a little stronger, a little weaker, you can do it when you're using grams. Uh, I Right now I'm using a 14 to 1 ratio. That's 14 parts of water to one part of coffee beans by weight. Now you have to be careful because you'll see some directions and some instructions on how to make coffee that'll talk about cups now when are cups not cups i'll tell you when when the coffee industry got a hold of cups a cup is a standard eight ounce measurement two of them make a pint pint is 16 ounces everybody knows that uh uh, uh not the coffee industry they've redefined cup to mean six ounces so you have to be careful when you're looking at their directions for how to do things and be aware that when the coffee guys say cup, they don't mean a real cup. They mean their own definition of cup, six ounces. So you got to watch out for that. The last thing that's important in general in making your coffee is the timing. With a French press in particular, it doesn't just end like a Mr. Coffee does. It ends and it's finished and when it's done, it's done. It's not like that with a French press. You have to end it. So you need to know how much time you should brew the coffee. And the recommended time generally agreed upon is between four and five minutes. I shoot for 4.15 or so, and that allows me a little extra time to fill the pot, and it averages out to about 4.30. I think that kind of makes sense. You may see in some coffee articles and some discussion, you may see a concept called bloom, where they recommend that you add about one third to one half the total amount of water in with the grounds in your French press and let that bloom for 30 seconds to a minute before you add the rest of the water. 
Well, I did that for months and then I stopped doing it and then I compared, I went back and forth. I could not detect the slightest difference from when I let the coffee bloom or when I just filled up the pot the rest of the way. One important difference between my method of French press coffee brewing and others is my use of a filtration system after the brewing is done, after the strainer is pushed down through the grounds and the coffee. I filter it once more to get rid of any residue, any loose pieces, loose particles, any coffee dust, what I think of as the coffee dust that actually forms the residue in the bottom of your cup. This eliminates any extra bitterness and also I've seen allegations that the particulate in French press coffee in particular may cause heart palpitations. So I don't want that happening to my subscribers or to myself. I don't want to filter it all out. But there's a problem. When I found my best kind of filter for this operation, I found that it filtered out what almost came to the essence of the body of the coffee. It seemed a little weaker to me. So what I did is I changed my ratio from 15 parts water to one part coffee down to 14 to one. And that fixed the problem. So the coffee is still strong and rich and not bitter. Originally in my post brewing filtration, I used this mesh filter, washable, reusable, and it was pretty satisfactory. It got out all of the larger particles that may escape, certainly, but it still left a little bit of residue in the bottom of the cup. Next, I tried this device that holds a paper cone filter like this, and it filters really well. The problem was it took so long for the pot full of coffee to pour through it, through the paper filter. Now, I didn't want to discard it completely because I found it made a great device for pour over coffee, but I had to grind my coffee beans a little bit finer, grind them to the point where it looked like beach sand. Doing that, I was able to make a single cup with this method, pour over method, that was very, very tasty and excellent and not bitter. Here's the equipment I use to make my French press coffee every morning. Left to right is a travel mug. Then I have my cloth filter. Then the electric tea kettle. The coffee grinder. The kitchen scale. And the actual French press pot. Don't let this overwhelm you. Actually, all you need to get started is a French press pot. Now you'll notice the one I'm showing here is a brushed stainless steel model, which is my preference. I've broken my share of glass models, which are the more common version of French presses, which you can buy. So I recommend, if you can, to get a metal one. You'll see also this is flared at the bottom, and the reason it's flared is because it's double walled. So that provides an extra measure of insulation. Now the way a French press works is it's filled with the water and the coffee grounds and then there's a strainer on a plunger here which goes in, fits inside and when the brewing is done after four to five minutes your timer goes off, you push the plunger down slowly and it separates the grounds out from the coffee. Then you'll see there's a notch cut in the top of the thing right here, which you now turn towards the spout and you can pour your coffee. Turn it back to keep the coffee warm. Now for a single serving, single person, want a single cup, we make a tiny one also. Good for a cup. And for entertaining guests, we have a great big one. Same idea, same idea, the plunger and the strainer. Now without making the investment in all this fancy equipment, 
you can get by with just your French press pot. What you do is boil about eight ounces of water and turn off the heat, let it cool for a minute or so, so it gets down to the optimum temperature of about 200 degrees. You don't have to measure it, you can estimate. A minute or two resting, it'll be about 200 degrees, that'll be about right. One to one and a half tablespoons of fresh ground coffee into the pot. Pour the heated water into it. Stir it up with a spoon. Leave the plunger up, of course. Put the top back on and set your timer. Four minutes and 15 seconds, for example, would be a good starting time for you to try. When the timer goes off, gently push the plunger down. Turn the lid to where you can pour, where the opening is showing. Pour yourself a delicious cup of coffee. And you did it without all the extra fancy stuff. The water for my French press coffee is prepared in this automatic electric tea kettle, which I can set to 200 degrees. It holds that temperature, which is exactly right for French press coffee. As a first step in making your French press coffee, you should preheat the vessels, the pot, and whatever container, whether it be a travel mug or a thermos, whatever you use to put the coffee in once you've gone through the final filtration. Now, hot tap water is hot enough. You don't need to go beyond that. But one thing I do suggest is you fill each container right to the top. I've seen videos where they splash a little hot water around the bottom of each container and assume that that's going to be sufficient to heat the upper part of the container, uh, which it may be to some degree. But think about it, where does the heat energy come from to heat the upper part of the container? It's sucked up from the bottom part of the container where the hot water is. So fill them right to the top. In the case of the French press, close it up. Now it's time to measure out the coffee. I prefer a kitchen scale for this, and I think it's really necessary to be consistent. Once you discover the mix and the blend that you like best, the only way to do it accurately is with a kitchen scale. So, my numbers are 36 grams of coffee and 500 grams or 500 cc's of water. That's a 14 to 1 ratio. Now I'm looking for 36 grams. Whoops, whoops, 21, okay. to the hopper. Now this is a burr grinder and if you have a similar machine the number I use here is 24 for grinding. take a look at the texture of this coffee. For French press coffee, you want your grinder to produce grounds similar in size to breadcrumbs. Incidentally, some have made an issue of what kind of container you should store your coffee beans in and I find that the bag that they're packed in generally is really good. I'm squeezing out the air, pushing down on the beans, then I'll fold the top over so that the band is right at the top of where the beans are and then I can fold it over tight, 
squeeze this together, put the band low, fold it over tight, and there we have it, a perfectly good package to store coffee. Now to brew the coffee. We set our scale to zero with the pot on it. Add our coffee grounds. Re-zero. Now we need our heated water, 200 degrees. And we're gonna put 500 grams of water in. 500 cc's or 500 milliliters, it's all the same thing. Alexa, set timer four minutes and 15 seconds. Four minutes and 15 seconds, starting now. Give it a good stir. And let the timer run. I put the plunger down just about to the surface of the coffee and I put the slotted notch of the cap facing backwards to give it the maximum chance to stay warm. When the timer is done, we gently push the plunger down. Now, I have found that this cloth filter, uh, kind of like a cotton sock, is the best method for my final filtration of uh, the French press coffee. The reason is it does a great job filtering out all the sediment, or what I think of as the coffee dust, and yet the flow through is quick enough that it doesn't take awfully long to do my pot of coffee. We'll put the cap on, and this is ready to go to the table for serving. You can see how effective this filter is by how much it has actually filtered out. Now, when I rinse it, of course, I reverse it, and look at the residue in the bottom of the sink, quite a lot. Every two or three days, I'll soak this in a 50-50 vinegar and water solution. If you choose to use a cloth filter of this type, which I highly recommend, I think it's at least marginally important that the flow through the fabric is always in the same direction to prevent microparticles from filtering back into your finished coffee. The way I determine that is by looking for the sewn portion of the cloth where it's sewn onto the ring. That'll happen only on one side. On the other side, it will just be overlapped. I pour from the non-sewn side all the time just to be consistent. To make excellent French press coffee, Start with your French press pot and another vessel like a travel mug or a small thermos large enough to hold the amount of coffee you're going to make, of course. The first step will be to preheat those two vessels. I like to use tap water, hot tap water. Fill the vessels up to the top, close them up, and put them aside. Then measure out your beans, figure out how much coffee you're going to make, Divide it by 15, for example. This is a starting number. You're going to adjust for your own taste as time goes on. 
make a few batches at one strength and try it different times and then you'll see whether you like it a little stronger or a little weaker. I suggest 15 to 1 as an initial ratio. That's 15 to 1 by weight. So it'll be one part coffee beans, 15 parts water to start. I've already admitted I use 14, but if you like, you can start with 15. So measure out your coffee beans. Use a kitchen scale. Measure out how many grams of coffee beans you need. In my case, it's 36 grams for 500 grams of water, but that's a 14 to 1 ratio. If you want to use 15 to 1, you'll have to do your own math. Okay, measure the beans, grind them, then get your preheated pot, dump out the hot water that you put into it previously, put the grounds in. Now, however much water you calculated you needed, in my case, 500 grams, in your case, I don't know the answer. You have to do the math yourself. Pour the water in. Pour the water in. Give it a good stir. A lot of the recommended procedures I've seen on French press coffee making don't mention this step, but I think it's important to get all of the benefit out of the flavor in the coffee beans. So stir it up after you pour it in. Meanwhile, start your timer while you do that. Once you started pouring, pouring the water in, I would say time it for 4 minutes and 30 seconds. You may have seen on the video I said 4 minutes and 15 seconds. That's because I was a little bit delayed after I started pouring. If I had timed it right from when I started pouring, I would have said 4 minutes and 30 seconds. So that's up to you. Start your timer at 4 minutes and 30 seconds when you start putting the water in. Stir it up real well. Put your top on. Plunger is up. Wait for your timer. Once the thing has gone off, press the timer down slowly. Now get your filter. As you see, I've recommended the cloth filter, the sock type filter. Dump the hot water out of your serving vessel, whether it's a thermos or a mug or whatever it is. Dump the hot water out. Get your sock filter, your fabric filter. Put it over the device you're filling. Open up your coffee spout, pour it through the filter into your new container. When that's all done, close up the top, rinse out your coffee filter, and you are ready to serve it. Well, it's been a pleasure going through this with you. I hope you're going to enjoy some really good French press coffee. I also hope that if you're not already a subscriber, please press subscribe. Another request I have for you that I don't think is too hard for you to do is think of someone that might benefit from a video like this and share it with them. Share it with them and we'll hope that they'll become a subscriber eventually also. Meanwhile, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it and I will see you again next time.